Hello, I'm David Wonsi. In this video, I'm going to be making images scroll on hover using the Beaver Builder photo module and some CSS. And this was inspired by a question that came into the Beaver Builder Beginners Facebook group. They wanted this effect often seen on portfolios. And there was lots of suggestions. In fact, I use a plugin for a similar thing myself. But it occurred to me that this could be done with some CSS. And that's what I'm sharing here. It is part of my Beaver Junction project, which is a plugin which allows me to share these working examples so you can just drag them into your pages. But you don't need to do that because the instructions or the CSS is all on this page, which I'll be linking to below and commented. And it's probably a better idea to put all your CSS in one place anyway, but handy perhaps to have a working example. On this, these two images are not linked, but this one is. So I've added another little effect where it has this view button here, but I'll show you how you can remove that. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to show you this using a demo site, which is just using the light version of Beaver Builder here. I do have the Beaver Junction plugin installed, which this one comes under the row templates, under the custom rows here. And let me find it. There we are. I'm going to drag that into its own row. And there we are. We have the working examples. I'm not going to hover while I'm in the editor. Now with this, everything, the CSS is all contained within the row settings itself. So they're here and it looks complex because a lot of actual comments over here, but uh, I'll show you that. The key thing to know here is that I've given this a custom class selector of scrolling image. You can call it whatever you like, as long as you make sure it's in all of the roles, but you do need to make sure that this is being referenced in the module itself. So if we go into the advanced settings here, you'll see that we've got scrolling image here and you don't put the dot here to signify the class in this case. So that's all you need to do to make sure that this works and we can move the CSS out. Let me just show you that this view button will come on if I leak the image. If I go over to here to the general, and select URL and I don't have one. So I'm just going to put in a hashtag and save this. And yeah, there we are, it appears. Okay, let me now explain the CSS. So I'll go back over here. So what we have first is something to identify the module itself. So we've got the module content, which is being selected here and obviously our custom uh, class selector that I've got in here. And what's happening here is that this is a long image that's actually on the page, but we're setting the overflow to hidden with a height of 300 pixels. So it's not gonna show anything beyond 300 pixels, but it, I can change that and show much more if I like. But I'm just gonna go back to 300. And when we come to the hover effect, just to make sure that things position correctly, you might want to put the margin top to the same number as we've got with the height here and here we are hovering the image itself now the magic happens really with the transform property and the value of translate here so this is moving this image on hover on a x and y axis so we want to keep it in place when it comes to the x axis but with the y we want to move it by minus a hundred percent so this is kind of moving this in place. And the rest is just done with the kind of animation. So we're setting the duration. I've set this to three seconds. So you can change this to whatever you like to alter the speed of the scroll. And we have this ease in and ease out, which is hard to explain. It's actually something much more complex using Cubic Bezier, something I've never done myself. There are some other options, ease just in or ease out. But really what it's doing here is means that it starts slowly and speeds up and then slows down as the animation is completed. So it just gives it that nice kind of effect. So that's what it's doing. You can look up if you want to change any of those. And finally, this is something we could remove. This is putting the same ease in and out on the image itself not while it's in the hover state. So that just means that it scrolls back into place when we take the mouse off and it does it in the same way it scrolls when we're hovering. 
So these are matched up, but you can change it. You could have the scroll back be much quicker or change the way that it scrolls back. Or you could just have it snap straight back into place. And you could do that just by removing the whole of this row. Finally, we've got um, the thing that's creating the view text here, which I've turned into a button. So if you're not going to use that, you're not going to link any view images, you can just remove this. So where there is an anchor tag here, so it needs that link in there. It can add in this pseudo element. I've talked about this before, but effectively a pseudo element before is adding in content. Here's the content, which is the view text that doesn't actually exist on the page. So that's what we're doing here. So as long as you keep in the quotation marks, you can just change that to your preferred text here. The rest of it is just about positioning that in the module area there and you can change the font size i'm sure you can work this out and also here we are just setting things like the button color here i've used uh, rgba the a is giving it some opacity so you can probably just make out that it's a little bit see-through there with that button probably don't want to do that you might want to use a hexadecimal value over here and have it straight and change the color and that's the color for the text itself and the rest of it is just the border radius, giving it a button kind of feel around there. And I think that's all I need to say on the CSS. I'll put a little note in here for those who are interested. If you want to create those full page images, you can do this with a Chrome extension, which I use all the time over here. Go full page. You just click on that and it takes, it scrolls down your page and takes one long screenshot of that, which you can use. Okay, let's do one final thing because I think it's good practice. Uh, we'll move this CSS out of the row. Now we're kind of happy with it. We can do that. So I'm going to select all and I'm going to delete it. And we shall, it's not showing any effect at the moment. Maybe when I publish, I think I will just need to do a hard refresh to show that it's gone there we are so there's our images as they were naturally and none of the effect and now we can place that css to our preferred destination which for me is always in the child themes css file the styles.css file where i put my custom stuff there so i'm just going to add this in i'm just going to update this you might want to put it in the customizer i think this is probably the better place says that's successful should be able to just go back now because we've got all our scroller images in our selector in those images it's going to work let's just go and do a hard refresh on this and looks like our effect is back oh seems like i've put it in twice but there we are. That's it. I hope this was useful. If it was, then please give me a thumbs up because it encourages me and I think maybe it helps me in YouTube or consider subscribing to the channel. Hope to see you in another video again. Thank you. Bye-bye.